Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to another in our new series of corporate communications online events. Let's turn my webcam on so you can uh, see my study here this morning. Today's session follows on from our other sessions in Crosses Communications with a topic that was discussed in those previous sessions, which was podcasting. Podcasting isn't new. Uh, it's been around since about 2005, but just recently in times like this that we're faced with, it seems that when we're trying to get communications through to all different people in all different ways, uh, it does seem like it's sort of gained some popularity again. I know certainly on LinkedIn in this past fortnight, I've been getting a few random questions about what I do with podcasting. So hence, we thought we would pull this presentation here together uh, to give you a bit more information about it. So hopefully my mouse clicks are going to work. There we go. Um, so this is me. Uh, my name is Chris Lukanenko. I'm the host and the creator of the Intelligent Workplace podcast, which is our weekly um, external podcast. But I also produce an internal podcast for Live Tales staff, which we call Live Tales. Um, I absolutely love recording uh, episodes with my guests. I, I talk to people from all corners of the globe. We cover topics such as diversity, uh, well-being, artificial intelligence, storytelling, and most recently, crisis communications, would you believe? But today, I'm going to focus more on using the podcast as an internal communications tool uh, because that's what we've had, really seen some success with, and it seems to be what people are interested in uh, with the questions I've been getting lately. So about us, if you don't know by now, this is Live Tiles. We're a global company specializing in employee and collaboration communication software and services and AI for the workplace. We're in many locations, and that is a key reason for us creating an internal um, podcast. Um, the agenda. So what am I going to cover today? Well, first of all, before I get started, this isn't a lecture. Uh, let's treat it as a bit of a conversation. It's going to be interactive, and I'm here pretty much just to help you. Uh, if you have any questions during the session, fire them into the app and I'll see them ping up on the screen and I'll do my best to answer them. And I'm also more than happy to continue the conversation offline if you really want to get into uh, some more deeper conversations around, around any of the topics that I cover here. Um, I'll share my email with you at the end so we can uh, facilitate that. I think this is going to be a bit of fun. So the agenda, first up, I'll take you through why podcasting. Um, I've got a, a bit of a cool story about how I fell into podcasting here at Live Ties, so I'll tell you that and how we set up our um, podcast for around about 500 bucks with a little bit of smoke and mirrors. I'll tell you a bit about why you should maybe consider implementing a podcast yourselves. And then I'll give you the rundown on what equipment that you'll need to get up and running you know, really easily. And then I'm gonna give you a bit of a sneak peek at our internal solution that we, that we built. Um, we sort of cobbled something together that was gonna save ourselves $50,000 when we couldn't find a solution in the market. So as I said before, if you've got a question, ping it up on the screen there and I'll, and I'll get to it when I can, or we can save it towards the end. We've got a bit of Q&A at the end there. So why podcasting? Well, imagine these are all your staff here on the screen and we need to communicate with them. They're no longer in the one spot. They're spread all around the country, the state, the world, wherever it be. And we need to, we need to talk to them. Podcasting is basically an efficient, effective and secure method of communicating with everyone in your company when they want to consume it and where they want to consume it. Now, the key message there is secure for me, and I'll come back to that a bit later, so just, just hold on to that one. It's also a really great way I've found to add a human element to, to communications that can sometimes be lost within the written word. You know what it's like when you read an email and you have to sort of, you decipher it in your own voice. And the other way you can get around that is to create video, but video takes a long time to produce and can be really, really expensive. When I record with my colleagues, um, I give them intro music, I, we joke around, we laugh, and we have a great time and all the while that we're telling the stories of the business. So we really sort of communicating not only a story, but a little bit of the emotion and the feeling around it as well. And that that's a real key to all of this. You know, we, we've got to make it sort of interesting. We've got to tell these stories, but I will come back to that a little bit later. So how did we begin this journey into podcasting? Well, it was kind of like the merging of a great idea with a little bit of a white lie. That's me there in our podcast room uh, the other week. And we created that for under $500, pretty much inside a day or so. You see, we had the two bosses, the, the two co-owners on uh, uh, on coming down to visit us down in Hobart. And we wanted to convince them that we should take over an extra part of this floor plan in, in the office. We've got the shared space. There was this office here that wasn't really being used. And we wanted to try and grab it because it was a good to use as maybe another meeting room or something like that. And, we, and one of my colleagues said, oh, let's just create a podcast studio. And we sort of looked at him a little bit funny. He was like, yeah, why would we do that? 
until he joined the dots for us. You see that logo that you can see on the other side of the screen there, that's, that's Live Tales. That's our internal podcast brand. And it's where we share some stories from one side of the globe to the other. Live, Live Tales was dreamed up by our CEO, but the actual details of how those stories were going to get from person to person hadn't really been worked out at this time. So a few days before the CEO was due to arrive, we did an online order of a few bits and pieces of recording gear and uh, some foam tiles that you can see there in the background. And then by the time that we here arrived, we had this podcast studio cobbled together and set up where we then pitched to him that we can record all of these stories and share them with the globe, all for less than 500 bucks. So we were pretty happy with that. And uh, literally that's where this whole journey began. This, that was about 18 months ago. Uh, at the same time, I decided I would start up a, a podcast in my spare time to um, talk about one of my great loves, which is craft beer, so that I could practice storytelling in my spare time and at work and hopefully get better to be able to, to keep this thing rolling. Um, I said 18 months ago, and we're still going strong, producing internal, external, and, and those beer ones as well. So producing anywhere three to five uh, uh, set episodes per week I'm doing now. So it is a bit of work, this podcasting. So this podcasting 101 slide, um, people don't realize that there is, is work in, in creating these. They hear a, a 10 or a 15 minute um, uh, session, sorry. Uh, Branson's just asking, could we send a, a list of equipment later? Yes, I will. I will uh, email afterwards with some links to where you can buy this equipment. No dramas, mate. Um, so as I said, look, it's a, it is a bit of work. Uh, you don't, when you listen to a 10 minute podcast, you think it's, oh, it's all easy, but you know, there is work in planning. Uh, you've got to set up to record. Maybe you're recording late at night if you're talking to someone on the other side of the world. You've then got to edit that, publish it, and then um, store those files and share them with your colleagues. So I'll just go into that in a little bit more detail now. My screen decides to participate. There we go. So the basic message here is you do not need to spend a lot of money on equipment. That's my mic there on the left hand side. Here it is. I'm actually using it today. That is the Yeti Blue, and that's about and it's available at JB Hi-Fi, Best Buy, you know, just your local electronics store. And that's pretty much all you're going to need, along with a pair of headphones to uh, to get yourself started. Um, on the screen there, you can see a little bit of a mobile kit. I've done some roving interviews at conferences and events and those sorts of things where I use this kit on the right. It's the Rode SCL6, two lav mics plugged into that little converter there, plugged into the iPhone with an app, and then you can record on the go. So that's another option if you if you are going to be doing roving recording, but being that we're all pretty much in lockdown, probably not going to be a lot of that going on. When I am on the road uh, in the past, I've got two of those Yetis that I take with me and then uh, I plug them both into my laptop, record directly into Adobe Audition with a little bit of mucking around, which I can talk about later on um, with anybody who's interested, and uh, yeah, record directly into that. Uh, a key thing down the bottom right-hand side there are the foam tiles. Uh, they they are important, but there are other ways around, around creating um, a space which is not having too much echo. So at the moment, I'm here in my home um, uh, set up my, my office. Uh, on the wall, we, which you can't see, I do have some foam tiles that are helping to stop the sound bouncing around. Occasionally behind me, I'll put up a, a blanket to stop the, the sound bouncing against the window and, and back and forth to stop echo. Um, but it's nothing too, too much more than that. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, one of my guests that I did a podcast with one time, he was in a big office space and uh, we were getting a lot of echo when he was saying to me, oh, do I sound okay, Chris, 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 Chris? It just kept repeating and I was like, we can't record like this. So he went somewhere in the, in the office and grabbed a big beach blanket and literally sat with the beach blanket over the top of his head, over the microphone so that it sort of kept all the sound in and, and that works. So, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. It doesn't have to be complex to uh, get a decent sound. Now, recording online is being that we're all in isolation or that sort of thing. This is going to be really key to any sort of podcast that you produce and picking the right piece of software here is, is a key element in creating a great finished product. Um, now, before I go on, I'm in no way, shape or form associated with Zencaster, the company that you can see on the screen that provide this solution. I just found this and absolutely loved it. And it's I think it's the best service that I could find uh, that's actually reasonably priced. I went through and there's a lot of options here. And this is what I went with. It costs about $20 a month. Um, there is also a free version, which I think just restricts you to maybe three three people recording at one time but with with the full one i think it's i'm not going to say unlimited but you record you can record with a lot of people 
how it works and what I really love about it is it uses local files. So obviously this is a web enabled um, solution, but what it does, it records the local audio to a temporary file on the user's laptop or whatever. And then once you've finished your recording, it then uploads those into the cloud. You'll see them appear on the screen there and you can download them and then work with them. So you don't get any interference based on a bad internet connection that sometimes might give you that, you know, that computerized audio sound or, or glitches. It's, it's really great for that. I've tried many others. Um, I've had a couple of failures with a few other different solutions where I've completely lost audio. I've just found this one to be the most reliable and uh, I really enjoyed using it. So that's that's my tip here. Uh, the one drawback with it is it doesn't use, uh, doesn't work with Apple devices. They're working on that. The reason why it doesn't is that they're, they're worried about the quality of the audio that comes through when they're using Apple devices. So they're, they're trying to find a fix around that, but mostly I haven't really had a problem with that. Uh, most people have got a laptop with some headphones and when I record with people, I just send them a link uh, with a few simple instructions on how to cut down echo and those sorts of things, the do's and the don'ts, and then we're away. Pretty simple. Editing, this is kind of where probably maybe some of the, the largest amount of effort is put into doing this thing. It can be time consuming. I usually like to allow one and a half times the duration of whatever I've recorded to edit it. Um, this here you can see is Adobe Audition on the screen there. I use that because we have a corporate license for the Adobe suite and you know with Photoshop and those sorts of things. So it came with that. Uh, in the past I've used Audacity, the logo you can see on the right hand side there, which was which is fine. That's a free product. And I've also heard good things about WavePad. I haven't actually used that myself, but a um, couple of free options there if you're um, looking at not or not wanting to pay for uh, Adobe Audition. Um, so in terms of editing, we don't try to do too much. I do edit out the rubbish, but I, with our internal ones especially, we try to sort of keep most of it in there. They're, they're only for our the ears of, of our family members within the four walls of live tiles. So the stuff ups, the laughter and the fun stuff, they're kind of all part of it and adds to a bit of the colour around it. So it's not too, you know, not too black and white, not too cold. It sort of really gives it a, a bit of warmth. Publishing. Now, this is where things really started to get interesting for me with this whole thing. You know, we had we had great stories internally that we wanted to share with each other, but we needed a publishing and, and uh, distribution solution that wouldn't share those with the outside world. So as I said before, it needed to be secure. And that was a major problem for us here. Once again, I did my research and I found lots of different great hosting options. There are literally hundreds of them, but they are all pretty much for public podcasts and were designed to go through iTunes and out to the to the world for everybody to, to hear. We needed a similar sort of solution, but we needed to be secure because potentially we might be telling uh, customer stories about someone who we can't share with the outside world. So we needed to keep them locked down. So I kept looking and I did find a couple of all-in-one solutions, but the problem was with those, they actually had their own app and they were about $50,000 to buy. We we needed to have something that had uh, no barriers for our, our team to be able to listen to these things. So we wanted to have it surface through their regular podcasting app that they're listening to all their other podcasts on. It needed to be secure and simple as well. And nothing that we found could provide us with that. So we built our own and look at that. Isn't it beautiful? I actually had to put this screenshot onto a onto this uh, laptop background to make it look look a little bit nice because it's it's ugly let's let's be honest we know it's ugly but it's ours and it works uh one of my ex-colleagues made this for me sam he's a great bloke zero interest in making things look pretty just want to make it work so that's what we've got and it is simple you basically upload your mp3 fill in the episode number and the title create a description with the WYSIWYG editor there and then that all flows through to the rss feed and then will appear on the phone uh with the you know, episode description links and all that sort of thing really really simple I'm not going to get into the technical details about around how this works because I'm not technical, but what this did do, it, it replaced the need for me to muck around with things called blob containers and database tables via the Azure Storage Explorer, which is, I was using sort of through the back end. Now I've just literally come to this page, I put my files and the details in there and they magically, magically get pushed into Azure for uh, people to be able to listen to them, which, which brings me to my next step, which is the sharing of all this sort of stuff. So as I said before, we wanted to make this simple to access. And uh, so we gave our staff a few options around this. So on the left-hand side of the screen there, you can see our live tales page on our intranet. We serve these episodes up via a, a bit of a custom tile and our staff can scroll through those episodes there and then they can click onto them, see the episode description that I've put in from the previous step, 
click on the links if they want, and then play them directly through their desktop. Top right there is a dedicated web page that we created, livetailspodcast.com. And it serves two purposes for us. You see, you have to be logged into your Office 365 account to be able to access that page and listen to these episodes. So it's all completely secure, which is which is the beauty of this. But it also allows us to create a unique RSS feed per user using those login details. So basically, the idea with this now is we've actually got this as a mobile um, web page. You log into that web page and then you click the link and then in that round red circle there, you can see it creates a unique RSS feed based on the user's login details. That then gets automatically pumped into the, the user's default podcast uh, solution that they use on their phone and adds it as an RSS feed to be able to bring it up. On the screen there, you can see, that's my phone, a screenshot from my phone, um, uh, that uh, basically is, is like any other podcast that I listen to. So uh, you can see there, my last episode was 28th of February. So coronavirus has kind of hit me between the eyes with this. I haven't made one in a little time, but uh, uh, yeah, you'll see them, they'll all come up through there and I can listen to that along with all of my sporting podcasts or music or whatever the hell it is that I like to listen to. So basically that was our problem solved. Now we've just got a question here. Uh, could you put the last five episodes, for example, on the front page of our intranet? Yes. We, we um, are working with it. We put them all in there and, it, and it, they're shown on that internet page in reverse order. So that would be the most five recent ones. Uh, that talk can then be moved around to other pages as well, but we've chosen to put it onto that page there because we also have a few links off to um, a couple of forms where we can get people to suggest uh, topics for the, um, the podcast and all that sort of thing and, and provide me with some ideas. So, uh, but there are definitely options there. Thanks for that question. Right, not, there we go. But wait, there is more to all of this. Um, because of it being linked to our Office 365 accounts, we, we can track who is listening to each episode. And this is awesome for us. So this is here is a, a Power BI dashboard that we built to summarize all of the information around this for me. I can see uh, in that top right hand side, in those little pie charts, you know, who's who's been listening by country, department, the browsers they've been using and the operating system so we know if they're on their phones or not. Uh, you can see down the left hand side who's listening to individual episodes. We've got a little scatter graph there of the countries that, that are most popular and the areas that are listening to this and then a, a graph over time. Now the good thing here is that we can also um, use this as a compliance solution which is really interesting. So perhaps in times like a crisis communication we need to get something out. See what I did there? We, we can use this to check that people have listened to it. The bottom right hand side there, you've got your user IDs and then the episode numbers go across the top and then the date that those people listen to those on. So we can we can see if we need everybody to listen to episode 25, we can track that, we can send reminders uh, and all of this stuff here can be exported into Excel if you want to make, uh, make use of it in, in another way. Um, the solution that you're looking at here, these, these few different pages, we haven't made this commercially available as yet. We've just been using it internally because we weren't really sure whether people were actually interested in it. So it does seem like now that people are with these with these recent events interested in doing this. Um, so look, if you're interested in finding out more about this, um, doing something similar to what I've been doing here, just shoot me an email and um, we can have a chat about it and I can put you in contact with the right people to talk about, you know, how this could work for you uh, in terms of the technical details and all that sort of thing. So um, more than happy to share share those details with you. Just excuse me for one second while I just flick the slide over. There we go. So we know that people are busy right now. Um, Lord knows that I am. So one of the main tips for me with all of this is respecting um, your people's time. Uh, so we keep things short. We think 15 minutes is about the sweet spot for our internal stories. Um, we feel like that duration isn't going to encroach on, on people's time too much. They can consume it on the bus, on the train, during the, the commute in the car, whatever it is, quite easily. Um, but another thing we also do with this, we sort of make people understand that this, this isn't something that we're doing for pleasure. This is, this is part of your normal working life. So making people understand that it's okay to, um, to basically um, 
consume this when you can, when you're making a coffee, or if you need to sit down for 10 minutes and listen to the latest episode, do it. So there was some comms around that because people were sort of feeling like that, you know, if they got seen with their headphones on in the office, that people thought they were listening to music or watching a video. So there was, we did a bit of a communication around that. That seems to be be cutting through. So um, next up, make it fun um, and interesting. You know, gather ideas from your colleagues, really have some fun with it because, you know, things are a little bit bleak right now. So doing things like that really um, adds that human element to it. And we found that having a good laugh on the on the the call or whatever is, is good fun. It really um, relaxes people and gets the best out of them. Um, speaking of being relaxed, I do find that some of my guests get a little bit nervous. So I always tell them that nothing is live. Uh, if they make a mistake with me, um, I cut cut it out afterwards. I'm not a journalist. I'm not looking for a scoop, even with my external podcasts. I just want to share great stories. So that sort of sets the scene. That's the first thing that I tell them to just relax. It's not live. And let's just tell a great story together. And sort of on that, don't forget what your role is with all of this. Um, you're a storyteller. Um, that's how I consider myself now, even though that's not my title, maybe it might be one day. Um, I am a short storyteller and I'm sharing the stories of my colleagues and you're helping them to share them. So help them to sound awesome. Um, it's pretty simple, you know, just sort of, you feed them up the, the really easy questions to start with to allow them, I would say to them, to, to knock it out of the park, you know, give them a nice, easy softball pitch and they can, they can whack it. So work with them to create a great story. Maybe you provide them with a bit of an outline on uh, the, the stuff that you're going to um, cover with them so that they, they can prepare beforehand, maybe even share the questions with them. That's fine. Just It's all about getting the best story. Um, I've just got an example here. Um, someone's asked me some of the internal topics you've done with uh, internally in the last few months with the Lifetiles team. So we have a few different things. Um, we like to tell stories about customers. That's, how, that's probably our key thing with all of this. We like to find the great customer stories and share that around the globe. So for example, uh, somebody who might be, you know, working with a big bank in Australia might be able to share some insights with someone who's working in a European or American division about an, another big bank in their area. So there's perhaps things that they can share that, um, you know, can help them maybe seal a deal or, or provide a customer with some more information or better service, all that sort of thing. So customer stories are certainly key. We've done some um, some fun stuff around people sharing their experiences or when they've moved to other countries, talking about that. We've done things around um, when we've launched new products or we've taken a bit of a shift in direction on a certain product and we need to do a bit of a technical talk. We've done those sorts of things. I've had our CEO on it for a few times sharing his vision for the company. I've had HR talking about um, you know the changing times, uh, but at the moment we're really trying to push out uh, customer stories a lot because uh, you know in times like this where things are getting a little bit tough, you know any information that we can provide our sales teams around uh, assisting customers in a better way that seems to be really important. So hopefully that's answered your question. But I guess uh, we we will try anything. Sometimes I've had episodes that haven't really resonated, so we won't do that again. But don't be afraid to try something. It only takes you know, 10 or 15 minutes to record someone, you put it out there, if it doesn't work, what's the worst thing that happens? You don't do it again. So yeah, have some fun with it and experiment would be another um, tip for mine. Um, one last thing, storytelling. So a bit of a blatant plug here for my external podcast. This guy here joined me for episode 24 of the Intelligent Workplace podcast. This is Steve Clayton, the chief storyteller from Microsoft. He is an amazing bloke. Uh, very giving of his time and an absolute wealth of knowledge in terms of corporate storytelling, both internally and externally. In this episode, you might get some inspiration for, for what you can do in your business. Uh, he shares some great stories, some insights and some really great tips uh, on this episode. I you know, I really love talking with this guy. It goes for about 45 minutes. So put it on when you're in, on your morning commute because he is absolutely fantastic. Someone who I really look up to in my, my current role as um, probably being at the absolute top of his game. If you get onto, I think it's stories.microsoft.com, you can see some of the work that they're doing, but um, he was magnificent. And we recorded um, on either sides of the globe via Zencaster one morning, and it was absolutely fantastic. Speaking of the intelligent workplace, this here, podcast.livetiles.myc is where all the external stuff um, goes. We're about to uh, start a second series of the Intelligent Workplace podcast, which is a, a sub-series, which is gonna be more around um, Things like what we're talking about today, sort of helping customers, etc., to to solve problems, and they'll be less about telling the stories and more about some more tactical things. So each of these uh, webinars that we've been doing, we'll reserve those through the the podcast under the education series banner, 
as uh, something that can hopefully provide um, all of our uh, network with, with some assistance during these difficult times. Woo! Oh, I want to take a quick uh, breath here and grab a, a quick drink. Uh, has anybody got any questions for me? You can ask them now through the, the question box, or maybe uh, you can send me an email if you want to get into something deeper a little bit later on. No brave souls out there needing to ask questions. That's okay. That's all right. We've had, already had a couple. Oh, we've got we've got someone on, a young gentleman um, by the name of Peter Brown. Is this compatible with live tiles and other systems? It is certainly compatible with live tiles. Uh, we've built this solution around um, the Office 365 environment because that's what we operate in. So it's using Azure Cloud Storage to sort of drive a lot of this stuff. And then we resurface it via our live tiles page design software. Um, at this stage, look, I'm, I'm dreaming big here. Maybe one day we could get it into Microsoft Teams as well. Um, at the end of the day, we're just sort of serving MP3 files and streaming them out to the world. So I'm sure this can work with other systems as well. Um, it's all about that storage element, I think, um, is, the, is the big key thing here. That, that was the issue that we couldn't solve with, with some of the other solutions um, because that was all sort of encased in, in all their tech. So this is sort of a little bit more open source um, and and I think it can work with other systems as well. But if, you have, if you're not in the Office 365 environment and are interested in it, talk to us and we'll see what we can do. Because as I said, I'm not, I'm not technical, but um, I know 100% for sure it works within the Office 365 environment. Uh, the question here, have you interviewed external guests such as health experts for internal podcasts, i.e. mental health? Uh, yeah, I have. I've, I did a great one with a lady by the name of Nina Purewall out of Canada, once again, recording via Zencaster, and she had written a book uh, based on her experiences with mental health and her journey into mindfulness. Um, when I do these podcasts, I do research into, into the guest and find out as much as I can, but you don't always find out everything. And with Nina, I knew that she'd had a bit of a life tragedy that, um, that caused her to take this, this direction when she was in her teens. I didn't actually know what that tragedy was until during the podcast and it absolutely hit me in the guts. I could not believe um, what she'd been through. I won't spoil it for you. I think that might be episode 25 if you want to go and find it out. Um, but uh, that was that was an amazing thing where you, you have a conversation and you, something just comes of it and you, you have a plan and then you go off on a tangent and just run with it. And I ended up sharing some of my story as well. And mental health in, in terms of what she was talking about is really important these days. And so we sort of wrap that all up into a real um, message of, of self-care and well-being and all that sort of stuff. And I've done a couple of those because um, I know internally we are really, really interested in looking after the well-being of our staff. Uh, one of our co-founders, Pete Newman Brown, is a is a massive um, supporter of this and we, we use that to support our live tiles initiative as well. So we'll be doing more on well-being once sort of all the, the coronavirus stuff settles down a little bit. Um, apologies for these things peeing up on my screen. Um, question here, why a podcast and not a short video? Um, well, there's a lot more work in doing video. Uh, I love video. I do I do, do a lot of work with video as well in, internally, uh, creating sort of uh, product updates and that sort of thing. Uh, the thing with video is that you need to be in person, I feel, to get a really great um, finished product. And that is difficult, that is cost prohibitive, and obviously in this time it is also a problem. But just in the last few days, I've been messing around with some videos for Microsoft Teams and working with one of my colleagues. And we were testing a call the other day where I was recording the call on my end and she was recording the call on her end. Uh, could we do an interview along those lines? So while I say we haven't really ventured into that in, in this space in terms of the podcast right now, I think we could. Uh, these these videos from these webinars are certainly going to be pushed out to YouTube um, as a, an on-demand type webinar series, if you like, as well as doing it on the podcast. So uh, never say never. Uh, I know, again, one of the co-founders is very keen on, on video because it is a powerful medium as well. So maybe maybe that will come, come soon because I, I certainly enjoy doing that myself as well. Any more questions while we're there? Great questions, guys. Thanks for those. I knew I would uh, enjoy doing this today. Um, so if there's no more questions, we might move on to next week because because as you know, uh, this is an ongoing series that I'm producing here. Uh, every Thursday we'll be doing these in the communications online event series. 
Next week, we've got a great one. So Microsoft Teams right now is a very, very hot topic. Uh, we're all over this year at Live Tiles, and uh, it seems like we're not alone there. Um, I've got a special guest joining me next week, uh, looking at going beyond the meeting with Microsoft Teams. A lot of people just think that Microsoft Teams is just for video calls and chats. But as we've shown with things like our, our Power Panel within uh, within Teams and how you can have everything all at your uh, at your fingertips, there is a lot uh, a lot you can do with this. Branson is just saying that they've started using Teams and it's amazing. My daughter is uh, going to be working from home uh, as of next week, so schooling from home, and they're using Microsoft Teams to facilitate that. So there are so many different things you can use this for. So I've got a, a special guest coming on to talk about some of those other elements that you can use Microsoft Teams for. So if you're interested in that, jump on, same place, same time, same channel next Thursday, and uh, we'll have a bit of a chat about that. So I guess if there's no more questions, I just want to say thanks for joining me today. Um, this has been wonderful. I, I absolutely love doing the podcasting. It's an absolute joy for me to be able to go to work and, and share these stories with people. So I'm glad that there's some people that have taken interest in it as well. It's been great having you here. Once again, if you've got any questions, you've got my email address. Shoot me an email and ask me whatever you like. I'm more than happy to help you. And if you want to go and have a look at that, that solution that we've built, I can help facilitate that as well. Um, I will email out after this with all the details around all the bits and pieces that I've spoken about here and share the, the presentation. So hopefully we'll see you here same time next week. For an, <coughs> beg my pardon, for another session in the Corporate Communications Online Event Series. Thanks very much. Have a great day.